Guys, what's up? It's been a long time and I'm excited to be back and talking about some of the interesting tools that we basically have now. I've been a bit busy with my own personal projects with my own agency. As you can see, uh, we are a design and development agency. We're scaling the agency as well. And I know a lot of you are designers and developers. So if you're interested in joining the agency, I mean, do send me a message on LinkedIn as well. We basically provide design and development services. And if anyone's obviously looking to get design and development services, you can feel free to reach out. We have very simple and straightforward pricing, brand guidelines, designs in Figma, no code development, UX UI design. It's all there so you can have a look at it and check it out. Today, the tool that we're, be, we're going to be talking about is something that I've been seeing a lot on LinkedIn. A lot of people talking about how it's really magical and it allows you to generate components directly from the fly and stuff along those lines. So I think I might actually just go ahead and do a review of it. So I have it downloaded here on my uh, computer or on my Mac. And one thing that I do want to point out is this tool is very similar to Figma in terms of its UI. So if we just open a file here. So as you can see, we have the design and prototype at the top. You have the alignment options. You have the height, width, whatever it is. You can also do an auto layout as well. The auto layout options are very similar to Figma wrapping. And they basically tried to have very uh, nice feature parity with Figma. They don't have variables right now, so that's something that's missing. But for the most part, auto layout, uh, wrapping, fills, your styles, and stuff along those lines, even the prototyping is very similar to Figma, even though may, they may not necessarily have every single thing that exists in Figma. Like for example, I can go ahead and I can link this prototype, this thing to this one. I have all of these mouse actions. So obviously these triggers aren't necessarily uh, the same list as the triggers that Figma has, but considering it's a new tool and considering the size that Figma has, and obviously these are much smaller or the, this team is definitely much smaller than that I'm imagining, they definitely have something done. So it's a good tool to explore, but one, what people are actually interested in when they talk about this tool are the AI generation capabilities. So what basically they have, they have a bunch of things when we talk about AI, they have these three things that I can talk about. So the audit, the audit basically looks at your design that you've done and compares it with some of the other styles that you've created and gives you suggestions. The replace is basically just replacing. Obviously, you can go ahead and actually replace something if you want. The style guide is generates the style guides based on the designs that you have imported or anything or you've created. And then this is the most magical thing that they have. And we can actually play around with it right now, which is create, which is the creative wizard. It allows you to generate components directly from scratch. And these aren't actual components by components. I mean, UI elements or patterns. So here on the playground, we're gonna try it out. It's asking me to generate a calendar here. So I'm just gonna press W and I'm gonna drag it here and I'm gonna search for a calendar. Even if I don't really search for something, it's gonna give me some suggestions. I don't know why it's giving me calendar suggestions automatically, but at the very least it's smart enough to know what I actually wanna generate or maybe it's just like really reading some of the text that's at the bottom as well. I don't know how it's doing it, but it's doing some magic. So some magic is definitely there. The photo gallery is generating the photo gallery. Actually, I tried and played around with this before and it wasn't doing it. So since I'm doing it again, maybe it actually remembers the things that I generated. So I don't really think it's actually really that smart, but I think it's just remembering the last things that I did. So now if we're talking about creating an Instagram post, I type post, obviously it doesn't generate that. I have to type card and then it's going to generate some I don't know what it's generating. Actually, the card was working previously. Okay, so now we have some cards here, Instagram cards or whatever it is. Probably let's just use this one. And if you use something that has an image, it actually starts generating those images for you. I'm not sure why it did not generate the image here, um, but it usually does. Actually, let's just try it again. So I'm just gonna search for gallery here again. And I think if you just click on it, Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm just gonna click on it and I'm gonna wait here. I'm not gonna close this model. So as you can see, it actually generated those images here as well. So I mean, it's okay and it's doing some magic. Definitely once it's generated, I can go ahead and I can tweak the buttons to my own liking. I can say, okay, maybe this shouldn't really have that big of a border radius because that's not my style. Maybe this card should have a background. Maybe it should have a box shadow as well. So we can go ahead and actually give it a shadow. So this is really good when we're talking about it generating ideas of something and then you can obviously modify it to your liking. 
Uh, some of the components that it actually has, I mean, they're auto layout and everything's good. You can scale them and that's fine. However, I don't really like the design aesthetic. So when we're talking about just generating these ideas from a design perspective, it's good for gen just generating ideas, but I think you would definitely have to modify them. And obviously these things definitely would have been components if I was doing it. So, so if I was to go ahead and actually create one or make one a component, I can duplicate it and obviously update the value and stuff along those lines, but it's not gonna directly allow me to update this one or notice this change and update this particular component automatically. So even if I go to this audit panel and I say I wanna audit everything, it's gonna say no style issues found because the style issues only cater to any color and typography things and some of the other things that we've mentioned here. So obviously that's a limitation in my opinion. Apart from that, obviously you can do a lot of other things which is pretty uh, amazing. So for example, I can select this particular image I can go to the magic on, I can go to the, the wizard, I can do a bunch of different things. Like for example, I can go here and I can click enhance. So I have the AI image enhancer and I can decide, okay, maybe the ratio for this particular thing should be one is to one and I'm going to out paint it. So it's actually gonna expand the image and it's gonna paint it. So if we just have a look at that, it should be done hopefully soon. And then I can go ahead and actually, I can insert it, this updated image that I have. So as you can see, it's here and I can obviously copy it and I can say that I wanna paste it here. So it's going to be expanded. Very similarly, they actually have this particular magic on thing where you can actually generate random images. So I can say that I wanna generate it into the style of a 3D realistic image. I can say I wanna generate a big blue balloon or something along those lines. And they also have some, again, some inspirations here as well reference materials i can say i want to go ahead and actually generate it it's going to take some time and it's going to generate these images for me so let's probably wait for that as well so as you can see we have the big blue balloon i can actually go ahead and i can say i want to insert this one i also have the option to actually go ahead and remove the background which we can have a look at it right now so the big blue blue balloon should obviously be here somewhere we can go ahead, we can click on this icon to open up the AI image enhancer. We can upscale it if we want to scale it for to a 2x size, so that's good. I can also go ahead and actually remove the background. So as you can see, this is a complex image with a lot of blues. So I can imagine that removing this background is going to be incredibly hard for even this AI. So let's see what it actually did. So this example shows this balloon, as you can see, it messed up the background here. This one is so much better. This is even better. And I think like this is much better, but obviously it's still not perfect because as I've mentioned, uh, I mean, uh, it had a lot of blues. So messing with the blues and doing all of that stuff is definitely not going to be great. So as you can see, I'm not here to present an idealized picture of this particular tool to you. I'm basically here to show you exactly what this tool does in a realistic scenario. So you can actually go ahead and play around with it. Apart from that, I also have this design here, which I wanna showcase. So for example, I can just copy this link and I can import it directly to Figma or to, sorry, uh, Creaty. And we're gonna say, I wanna paste a link here. So I'm gonna select the link. It's gonna load the file. So let it, let's, let's say load the file. It's gonna ask me which pages do you want? I'm gonna say just to, for obviously the ease of it, I wanna import just page one. The importing I think is definitely really fast. So that's impressive, but I still feel like uh, the tool itself has a lot of limitations when it comes to AI, which we can have a look at right now. So hopefully it should be done pretty soon. It's done, I'm gonna say done, and then we have our file directly. So op opening the file is definitely much faster in uh, here. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna do this. Some of the images obviously did not get imported. As you can see, I have images here for Netflix, Uber. They didn't get imported. I have images here on the cards as well, as you can see for the MasterCard and Visa. They also unfortunately did not get imported. But now let's have a look at what we can do here. So since I have a bunch of styles that I've already used, I can go ahead and I can say, I wanna audit all of the layers in this page and I want you to create uh, certain design style. So I can do an audit as well, but even before doing an audit, I think what we should do is obviously generate the style guides, apologies. So I'm gonna say that I wanna extract all of the values. So here are my brand colors, here are my neutrals, here are my drop shadows and all of that stuff. Then I'm gonna say generate. So once I do that, it's gonna generate all of these things for me on the right hand sidebar, we should be able to see it. And we should also be able to see this whole page here. 
So we have the font sizes as well. We have the corner radiuses, we have the shadows. And this is definitely pretty impressive. Unfortunately, it generated all of this in the same page, which is obviously something that we do not want. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just press Command X and I'm gonna go to a separate page and paste it here. So now let's say if someone wants to iterate on an already designed item, how does this actually work? I'm gonna press A, I'm gonna say that I wanna generate an iPhone 13 mini and now let's say I wanna generate the header. So I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna say that there here I should have the header. It obviously should be smart enough to generate that I wanna generate a header here based on the location that I'm generating it in. And unfortunately it takes a lot of time sometimes for it to suggest me options, but still we're gonna wait for it because we want this to be a realistic tutorial. Even though I am, I think, going to actually speed up all of this waiting. So here I have the header. Uh, and a bunch of headers that I can actually generate. Obviously, let's maybe just generate this one. I'm gonna resize it. Okay, so that's fine. Let's just maybe move it from the edge to the edge. Maybe we can place it above. Okay, so that's fine. Now maybe let's generate, let's probably try to generate what we have below. So we're gonna have maybe a toggle here. So I'm gonna say that I want a toggle. Let's search for a toggle. So obviously I have just one toggle, but one thing that it actually does really well is it actually recognizes that I, you have a toggle in your component or in some of your other pages. So maybe you actually just wanna use the same toggle. So it's actually suggesting me that. Very similarly, if I was to go here and I was to say that I wanna generate a card, it's definitely gonna give its own cards as well, but it's gonna give my card as well that I have here because it recognizes that, okay, you may actually want to use the card that you already have. So we've included the card here, that's good. Um, then, it, then we have a drop down. then we have a chart, and then we have some items. So I'm gonna, let's say, just say that I wanna generate a listing. I don't necessarily want this tutorial to go really long. So I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna generate a listing of these items very similar to what we have here. So obviously it wasn't able to do that. Let's just check what this name is. So this is the expenses block. So I'm gonna say expenses. Unfortunately, sometimes it just stops working. So we're gonna try it again. I'm gonna click here just to say that it actually is inputted here or focused here. So it doesn't actually go to some other shortcut so i'm going to say expenses so it does recognize that we have this expenses block and i'm going to, i can create an auto layout and do whatever now obviously if i manually go ahead and actually set the background here to something like this it would start working and i have some of the components rendered here so as you can see this is a component and i can go ahead and act, i can actually do things but one thing that i feel like is missing here is if let's say i was to go ahead and generate a footer here as well so if I was to generate this footer here, I can say that I wanna have a nav bar here. Obviously this is going to be my bottom nav bar. And I think it should definitely give me, so again, it didn't give me that. So I can have, I just can't bar or something along those lines. I don't really know what it, what this particular tool actually references this particular thing as. Maybe it's gonna be footer or something. Okay, tab bar. So I'm gonna generate this tab bar. Okay, it's here. I mean, it's okay. Obviously I can't see it. I have to change this background in order to see it, I think. So let's just go ahead and actually change that to a darker color. Now, as you can see, it's actually generated a lot of other colors that I don't really need, but I mean, it is what it is. I also think we should actually generate a tab bar that actually has some text written as well. So we can see what it's actually doing. So tab, unfortunately I have to scroll down, tab bar. Okay, let's try to generate this one. Okay, it's generated now. Now let's do one thing. I'm just gonna go ahead and do an audit. I'm gonna select this particular layer and I'm gonna uh, basically say that I want you to recognize it with the local library and I want you to audit it. So it's gonna start auditing it. It applied a bunch of, or it gave me a bunch of suggestions. But as you can see, it's not asking me to change the background even though all of these other uh, pages that I have are using the darker background. If I apply all of the audit stuff that it basically had, the design still looks very distinct from some of the previous designs. So my take, like, I don't really think this AI thing is working. I mean, it's good to generate these, these audit, uh, I mean, these design styles or the style library, I think that's good. But these components that it has are absolutely ugly. And apart from that, 
I mean, it doesn't really update them to match the style that I have anyway. So I don't really see a huge reason. I mean, it's okay in terms of idea generation, but this card thing, it actually proposing, like for example, if I go here and if I say I wanna generate something and I let's say call it a footer or ask that I wanna generate a footer, since my component itself is called a footer, it's gonna suggest that it places here, places it here. But I mean, I can do pretty much the same thing. I can just generate whatever it is that I want to generate. I can press shift I, I can say I wanna generate a card and I can basically choose all of the cards that I have. I can say, okay, I wanna insert this card. I can insert it. I can press shift I, I can say I wanna insert the footer. I can insert it as well. I mean, this is definitely much faster. What this does not do, Figma at least does not do right now. It doesn't give me suggestions from uh, out of the blue, like magic. But as you can see, like this isn't really that hard. Imagine just having a single design library. It seems like that's what they're doing. They basically have a design library that has a bunch of these components, these like default components that you actually see here. Let me just remove this from here. Let me remove this and let me just go here. It seems like what they're doing is they basically have this panel that basically connects to their design library that has a bunch of basic components like galleries, like sidebars, like I don't know, headers and stuff along those lines. And when you search for them, they basically just supply you these things along with any of the design system elements or the components that you already have in your design. So they're just basically providing a combination of from their design file and what they basically have here. And most of these things that they're providing aren't really customized to your designs. They're just generic components that are that you can basically include from their design library or something. So I think like that works very similarly if in Figma you had a design library, like I have a bunch of other design libraries, right? So I can have the uh, untitled UI design library. I can press shift I like for example, shift I, and I can search for, let's say a header in all of my components. Now it's gonna give me a bunch of different headers. Maybe I can go ahead and actually directly include these cards if I'm creating a landing page or something along those lines. So I can go ahead and actually do something similar. Sure, it may not be as smart to give me the exact suggestion that I'm looking for, but I don't think that's really that hard to do. So all in all, I would probably give this tool a five or a six out of 10, just because it has some feature uh, parity with Figma. But this AI for me is just like one out of 10 or two out of 10 for the most part, because I don't really see a lot of value behind it. Sure, the AI, the image upscaler is good. You can remove background images and stuff along those lines, but that's pretty much it. I mean, most of these component generation, I'm not really impressed. And I know some of you are, so I know this is going to be an unpopular take, I guess, but I mean, that's pretty much it. So do subscribe, do hit the bell icon and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.